Overwhelming, especially for those who don't drink alcohol. So 12 in your size, Marilyn Wartz has some substitutes that can still be in the holiday toast. Plus, the holidays tend to bring joy to many, but for some it may bring sorrow if they're missing a loved one. We hear from psychologists about what you can do if you're feeling the holiday blues. And in today's Gardening with KSAT, how to make sure your real Christmas tree lasts through the new year. Sarah Costa shares tips and tricks to keep your tree fresh and alive. And be careful on the roads this morning, especially if you're doing an airport run. We've already seen some incidents on the road. We do have wet roads in many spots. More to come on GMSA. Rise and shine. Let's look out there with live cam. Not cold, so you're not going to need a coat, but you may need an umbrella or a rain jacket instead. Hello, good morning. It is Friday. It is <laughs> December 22nd. We're trying to be sneaky. Yeah, Not that, wake was, anybody that up, was kind right? of a stealth, <laughs> a stealthy open for the end yeah. of the week here, the Friday before Christmas. That's right, but it is time to wake up. It is 6 a.m. And just to get you started, let you know if you haven't stepped outside or if you haven't heard, it's been raining this morning. Yeah, we have some rain in the area. We had a downpour right around the time our newscast began this morning. Mia Zen for Mike, good morning. Good morning. Very happy to be with you guys this yeah. Friday, kicking off the holiday weekend. Yes, it is definitely a damp start out there. We have just got fog in place. We've got some drizzle and mist, so please be careful out on the roads. Give yourself some extra time early today. You can see visibility, at least the latest here, is at the top of the 6 a.m. hour, still down to just a quarter of a mile near Bernie, about one mile near SA International, a quarter of a mile in New Braunfels, about a half mile out east along I-10 in Seguin. So yes, that fog is dense in spots and roads are damp and we still are monitoring a few more notable light showers, especially the far northeastern portions of Bear County just outside of Loop 1604. A little bit of light rain both along I-35 west of New Braunfels as well as I-10 just west of Seguin out there in far west Western Guadalupe County. Probably a good idea to at least keep the rain gear with you should you need to use it today. We've got about a 30% potential to find a few more isolated light showers roam portions of South Central Texas throughout the afternoon. The cloud cover will stick with us as well. High temperatures topping off in the upper 60s. The fog should get better and at least start to lift on out of here by late morning. So at least we've got that going for us. Looking ahead to tomorrow, another round of patchy fog as well as some drizzle expected in the morning, maybe a few scattered showers to an isolated storm in the evening it will be pretty mild out there as well. Christmas Eve in the morning could be a rainy start in spots. We're expecting our next cool front to move in on Sunday. That will clear us out by the afternoon, leading way to more sunshine and a fantastic Christmas day, although it will be a little bit windy. So we'll have all those details coming up a little bit later on. But first, RJ, how are things looking out there on the roads with all of that fog in place? All right, Mia, it's been a little bit busy, but you know what? Crews are taking care of business this morning on your Friday morning commute. As we take a look here at Loop 410, these are the eastbound lanes at San Pedro. Just saw emergency crews clear out uh, what was reported as a crash right here on the eastbound lanes at Loop 410. So, of course, the San Antonio Airport exit is right there. So that is good news if you are headed out to maybe get onto a flight or just headed out in this area right now. Take a look at our maps, and we still are uh, seeing, obviously, our maps are still indicating we do have that stalled vehicle there on uh, the eastbound lanes of Loop 410, but we just saw that clear out. Uh, we are still seeing a uh, stalled via bus actually a little bit further north there at 281 and Nakoma. And I'll give you another look here in just a bit exactly what's going on there. 281 northbound at Nakoma. The rest of the city, things are looking pretty good right now, despite the fact that we've seen rain in some spots, some damp roads, obviously dealing with a lot of fog, especially on the north side. But otherwise, Things are pre looking pretty good right now. Let's give you one quick look at this uh, via bus that's been stalled now for the past uh, 30 minutes or so. This is again northbound lanes 281 at Nakoma. We are seeing traffic move through the area here, but again, something to just keep in mind if you are headed north of the San Antonio airport. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. This morning we're learning more about the reason for delays for the new elementary school over in Uvalde. The board behind the project is now looking at a second bid after the original bid came in at more than that was budgeted. Tim Miller with the Uvalde Moving Forward Foundation says the original budget for the project was $60 million. Miller says the board is trying to be good stewards and use the money they've received wisely, but this will push back when the school is ready. 18 months is the, the, the timeline that 
uh, we estimate. And if we can get it done sooner, great. Um, and I, but more than likely, it will be completed during the 25, 26 school year. Miller tells us that he expects the board will make a decision on a bid early next year, and they're still trying to raise more money. Bagpipes part of a memorial last night for a sobering number of homeless people who died in San Antonio this, is, this year. This is what it looked like over at Milan Park. People coming to remember those who passed at a memorial hosted by the nonprofit Sam Ministries. According to their data, 322 people experiencing homelessness died this year. That's nearly twice as many deaths recorded as last year. The oldest, 96, the youngest, just 11 days old. It's a reminder that we still have a long way to go to ensure that homelessness is rare, brief, and non-recurring in San Antonio. Mayor Ron Nirenberg, who you see there, also spoke about the steps the city is taking to reduce homelessness in San Antonio. That list includes things like more affordable housing and homeless shelters. Many morning headlines were turning overseas in a deadly mass shooting at a university in Prague in the Czech Republic. Authorities say a student shot and killed at least 14 people and injured more than 20 others. Officials also warning the death toll could still rise. ABC's Justin Finch has the latest details, including what the Czech Republic is declaring. Heavy hearts at a candlelight vigil at Charles University in Prague. Students honoring victims of a mass shooting on their campus, now called the worst in Czech Republic history. I think everyone was just in a state of shock. Again, these things don't happen here. The harrowing scene playing out near a Prague Christmas market packed with tourists. Video capturing frantic moments at a university faculty building. Some students climbing through windows to crouch atop high ledges to escape the gunmen. There was a couple of... Uh... Uh, banks. I didn't even realize it's a, it's a shooting. Then uh, suddenly there were uh, students and, and teachers running out of, uh, uh, out of the building. Terrified students with their hands up later met by armed officers who rushed them to safety. I was really shocked and yeah, I, I tried to check that everybody who I knew, know is from the faculty is it's okay. Czech Republic authorities identify the shooting suspect as a 24-year-old male Charles University student who legally owned several guns. They say he was heavily armed as he opened fire inside that faculty building before he was found dead minutes later on a sidewalk. Investigators say they have evidence the gunman was inspired by a similar shooting in Russia. Police say the gunman also killed his father before the university massacre and may have been plotting a far bigger rampage given his cache of weapons and ammunition. Authorities suspect the gunman is also behind the killing of a man and his two-month-old daughter in Prague just last week. The Czech Republic now declaring tomorrow a national day of mourning. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Honda is recalling 2.6 million vehicles for a fuel pump issue. If it fails, the vehicle could lose power. Now, this problem affects several 2017 to 2020 models sold under the Acura and Honda brands. That includes cars, SUVs, vans, and pickup trucks. So Honda says it will replace the fuel pumps at no cost. It plans to begin notifying owners in February. But you can find a full list of recalled models right now on our website at kset.com. Stamp prices will be going up again starting January 21st. USPS says forever stamps will go from 66 to 68 cents. Whenever forever, forever stamps were introduced in 2007, they cost 41 cents. Postal Service says previously purchased stamps can still be used after the price increase. That's why they're called forever stamps, right, Steph? <laughs> Other USPS services like Priority Mail and Priority Mail Express will also cost more starting next month. Well, here we are, almost Christmas week, and if you per prefer a real Christmas tree to an artificial one, it can be tough to keep them alive throughout the entire holiday season. Well, in today's segment of Gardening with KSET, Sarah Costa shows us the best ways to keep your tree alive through at least the new year. For years, I've been a real Christmas tree girly. I love the tradition of going and picking out a Charlie Brown Christmas tree and how it makes a house smell. But once you get it all set up, how can you keep the magic of keeping that real tree alive through the new year, especially if you bought it around Thanksgiving? Once cut down, Christmas trees can live anywhere from four to five weeks. So as soon as you pick it out, before you put it into the stand, 
cut one to two inches off the bottom of the tree trunk. This reopens the tree stem so it can drink water. <laughs> Then water immediately and water, water, water. Your tree stand should hold at least a gallon of water, so you have to make sure it's full, which can mean watering every day. And no, there is nothing that you can add to the water that's gonna help it last longer. These are all commercial suggestions or old wives' tales. Research has shown that plain tap water is simply the best. Keep away from space heaters or fireplaces because this can dry them out and it's also a fire hazard. And when the needles are browning and falling off a lot, it's time to take it out. You can cut it up for your garden beds, put it in your compost bin, or take it to one of the city's Christmas tree drop-off locations. Happy gardening, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Now, where did she find that forest to walk through there at the beginning? <laughs> It's in her backyard. I saw the qualify. <laughs> it wasn't actual footage, but it looks so darn real. Oh, it didn't. 610, 62 degrees. Well, Google has announced a new feature for safety. Still ahead, how it helps you and when you can expect it to start. As we get cl cl closer to Christmas and New Year's, people may want to celebrate with a drink or two, but what about those who don't drink alcohol? Coming up next, look at some bubbly alternatives that they can still make to, to, that can still make the holiday drink menu. And let's look out there with live cam, kind of foggy and a little wet in some spots. So you're going to have to watch that out, watch for that on the roadways and be careful. We're going to have a check in with RJ Marcus for those roadways in just a minute. Welcome back at 614. Well, it's the season for holiday parties at work with family and friends. And if you're hosting, it means stocking up on drinks. But not everyone is into alcohol. So 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz has some sparkling substitutes that are worthy of a holiday toast. Cheers, but if you want to raise a glass without the alcohol, good news. There are a lot of alcohol-free sparkling wines to choose from. Your guests may be driving, sober, pregnant, on medication. Whatever the reason, it's always a good idea to have some non-alcoholic options available. So which ones are worth serving? Time for a blind taste test. Consumer Reports rounded up a dozen staffers. They tasted eight dealcoholized sparkling wines, which are made the same way as regular wine with the alcohol removed at the end. And they also tasted two wine alternatives, which contain herbs, fruit, tea, and some fizz. They rated each one for flavor, bubbliness, and if they would actually buy it for themselves. Here are the results. Most testers liked this one, Venata Tintling Tempranillo Rosé. They said it was refreshing and sweet, but not too sweet. On the sweeter side, this was the runner-up, Sutter Homes Frey Alcohol Removed Wine Sparkling Brut. If you're buying a lot for a party, they suggest the more affordable Rondell Zero De-Alcoholized Sparkling Wine. It's $11 a bottle. They can be great alternatives, but manage your expectations. Testers say the non-alcoholic drinks aren't exactly the same as their counterparts, but they're getting pretty close. Whatever is in your glass, cheers to a safe celebration. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Toast. All right, 616 on your Friday morning. Let's check back with RJ, see flashing lights over there at mm -hmm. Highway 281. Yeah, guys, uh, been a little bit of a developing situation there. Now, fortunately, we're not seeing any major delays here. You're looking at northbound 281 at Nakoma, but uh, interesting that it's taken a little while. Trying to get more information on this. Uh, Trans guy told me a little bit earlier there was a VIA bus that uh, stalled here. So obviously it's off to the shoulder. So that's good news here on the right hand side. But uh, it's taken a little bit of while, maybe because it's a bus uh, to clear this out, but again, not causing any major delays right there on 281 North at Nakoma. So that's good news here. And it's a quick show you quick view of the map here. You can see it's just a little bit north of the uh, of the San Antonio airport right there on Nakoma. Want to take you closer to downtown right now. We do have a crash being reported now on uh, 35 southbound at I-10. It's been a very busy kind of active area right now. So I'll uh, kind of get a closer look, see if we get something on Transguide here in just a little bit and maybe uh, get a better idea of what exactly is going on here. But again, southbound 35 at I-10, uh, we have a reported crash in the area. We're going to give you one more look here. Again, 281 North and Nakoma. And obviously, we are still following a lot of stuff here uh, with the fog. 
Uh, we've seen it uh, get a little bit uh, thicker in some places. You're looking at 281 and Encino Rio out there on the north side. And uh, obviously something that, uh, you know what, if you're headed out right now, just keep this in mind. Going to maybe run into some fog or some uh, wet roads out there. Yeah, Mia keeps going, uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh -huh. Yep. Yep. yep, exactly. I know earlier RJ <laughs> was showing like the 281 Encino Rio camera and just the north side of San Antonio really had the densest fog. And that's exactly what we've seen out there in terms of visibility. So yes, great advice. Definitely be careful on the roads, give yourself some extra time to get to where you need to be because not only are we dealing with the fog, we've got a few light showers. We had a couple downpours move through San Antonio earlier this morning. So roads are damp in spots. This is the latest in terms of your authority radar. The light shower activity we're still monitoring in terms of the more notable rain that's now moved just east of Bear County. We've got a light shower right along I-10 just north of New Berlin, west of Seguin, but that is riding right along I-10. So if that holds together, that will be near the Seguin area over the next 30 minutes. So we'll continue to keep eyes on that here over the next several hours in terms of the potential to see some additional isolated light showers push across portions of South Central Texas. Not everybody is going to need to use the rain gear today, but a good idea to at least have the umbrella in the car just to be safe. Fog conditions will improve later this morning, but generally we're still expecting a pretty cloudy day here in San Antonio with that 30% potential for a few more stray light showers to pop up generally before the day is done into Saturday. Another round of morning drizzle is expected along with some areas of fog, but then by late Saturday afternoon and I think even more so into Saturday evening, we've got a 40% chance to see some widely scattered showers, maybe an isolated thunderstorm, but our next best chance for rain moves in overnight Saturday and very early Sunday morning. So that's some Something to think about, especially if you're planning on hitting local roadways very early Christmas Eve. So let's go ahead and talk about that setup. You can see the rain activity, at least here in the Lone Star State early this Friday, along and just east of the I-35 corridor for the most part. We're interested in this area of low pressure way off to our west. That's still sparking rain and storm activity near Los Angeles in Southern California. Watch what happens here on your future cast over the next couple of days by 9 a.m. tomorrow. This is now positioned over the desert southwest. The slow pressure system is essentially what's going to drag our next cool front into the region as we head into Christmas Eve on Sunday. So that next best chance for rain before the sun comes up on Sunday way out west already starting to see some rain and storm activity develop that will gradually work eastward by about 5, 6, 7 a.m. early Sunday morning closer to San Antonio. Yes, some scattered rain rain, maybe a couple of rumbles of thunder, certainly possible. But then notice as that front quickly moves eastward, it clears this out by Sunday afternoon. We're actually expecting a little bit more sunshine in terms of actual rain totals farther south that you go just up to about half an inch, maybe some localized pockets closer to an inch, certainly not off the table. So that's something we'll be monitoring through Sunday. Trending drier though by Sunday afternoon and evening. Speaking of drier, low humidity is going to work in. So because because of that, temperatures are a bit warmer as we see the sunshine return for your Christmas Eve. 74 degrees, the forecast high temperature. After that, it gets a little breezy Christmas morning on Monday, but check out those temperatures. Absolutely beautiful. Returning to more of that Christmas feel in the mornings, upper 30s, low 40s. So you will need the coat then as early as Tuesday. And then that drier air making for great afternoons with highs in the 60s. Yeah, it's a little bit of something for everybody. People who like the cold, they exactly. can wear their jackets in the morning and then a nice afternoon. I'm excited for sweat, sweater weather after that too, so it'll be great. Me too. Thank you, Mia. Of course. 621, 62 degrees. And with just three days until Christmas, retailers are offering deals for last minute holiday shoppers. After the break, a look at some of those deals and where you can buy them. <coughs> COPD hasn't been pretty. It's tough to breathe and tough to keep wondering if this it's as good as it gets. But Trilogy has shown me that there's still beauty and breath to be had. Because with three medicines in one inhaler, Trilogy keeps my airways open and prevents future flare-ups. 
And with one dose a day, Trelegy improves lung function so I can breathe more freely all day and night. Trelegy won't replace a rescue inhaler for sudden breathing problems. Tell your doctor if you have a heart condition or high blood pressure before taking it. Do not take Trelegy more than prescribed. Trelegy may increase your risk of thrush, pneumonia, and osteoporosis. Call your doctor if worsened breathing, chest pain, mouth or tongue swelling, problems urinating, vision changes, or eye pain occur. What a Ask your doctor about Watts Daily Trilogy for COPD, because breathing should be beautiful. This is fast work. In this morning's GMA First Look, get ready, holiday shoppers. In just a few days, Santa's coming to town. A lot of consumers are still out there shopping. We are expecting to see more deals from those retailers that do have a physical footprint. Believe it or not, there are still deals to be had, like on electronics. At Best Buy, you can pick up this HD Chromebook Plus laptop for $249. That's $250 off. And on top of the deals already out there, Super Saturday coming tomorrow. It's kind of like the last gasp of the holiday shopping season. According to the National Retail Federation, an estimated 142 million shoppers will be closing out their holiday shopping season this Saturday. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have the expert advice on how to find the best last-minute deals out there. With your GMA First Look, I'm Ariel Reshef, ABC News, New York. Google says its safety check feature will now run automatically in the background on desktop. It checks the Internet to see if any of your saved passwords have been compromised. Google also says the feature is bringing new AI features to Chrome early next year. With the Consumer Electronics Show less than three weeks away, LG has revealed its new gaming monitor. The display allows users to switch to a higher resolution with a click of a button. So LG is also expected to reveal four curved OLED ED displays. Do you know what LG stands for? A long time ago, there was a kind of an off brand, like a discount brand uh -huh. called Lucky Gold Star. Oh. And they rebranded themselves with focus on quality products. And here we are with LG. I, well, I think I'm thinking of the commercial with the Life's Good yeah, <laughs> commercial or exactly. something like that. I was like, is that's that right. Yep, yeah. that's their slogan. 626, 62 degrees. And still ahead, a follow up to our Know My Neighborhood series in Dignity Hill. What they are asking city officials after a growing number of stray animals continue to be seen in their area. If you're making an airport run today or have errands to run or work today, be advised the roads are wet in spots and we've already seen problems, especially at normal trouble spots. Big curves on 281. RJ will have an update after the break. Outside with live cam the Friday before Christmas. Expect heavy traffic out at the airport yet again today for people dropping off or picking up. And we've already seen some problems on the roads, but not lost on us is we're about to begin the holiday weekend. Just about all the kids are now officially out of school. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday the 22nd, and as promised, I brought the eggnog, and we're Yay! ready to go for our holiday toast at the end of this half hour. That's right. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. Nice and cold, too. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. For, for all of us. And Mia joining, joining us as well. You ready? Good morning. Morning. I'm so ready. Me yep. too. It's going to be so much fun. Uh, yeah, kicking off the holiday weekend, it is definitely a damp and warmer than average start to the day. We are still dealing with fog in and around the San Antonio area, some of which is pretty dense out there. We have seen visibility slightly improve on the north side of San Antonio and Bear County closer to the airport. Still, though, Bernie just down to a quarter of a mile in terms of visibility. So that fog is dense. Please be careful out there on the roads. Give yourself some extra time to get to where you need to be. We also have been monitoring a few very light showers. We've got some mist in place and some patchy drizzle. Notice your temperatures in the low 60s for the most part. For context, our average low for this time of year is in the low 40s, so about 20 degrees warmer than average because of all the moisture in place and the cloud cover. And very similar to what we saw yesterday, the cloud cover is not really going anywhere throughout the majority of this Friday. Temperatures in the mid 60s at lunchtime upper 60s out there on the thermometer in terms of those daytime highs will keep about a 30% potential to maybe find a few more isolated light showers before the day is done. More of the same into Saturday temperature wise as well. Our next best chance for rain and storms though moves in overnight Saturday and early Sunday morning, but then our next cool front moves through on Christmas Eve. That's going to clear us out by Sunday afternoon. Cooler and drier air will make for a very pleasant Christmas day on Monday 
today, but it could get a little windy out there. So we'll talk more in depth about all of that coming up a little bit later on. But first, RJ, how are the roads looking out there this morning? All right, Mia, it's been a busy Friday morning for our drivers out there. The latest incident here, you're looking at northbound 281 at San Antonio River. So a little bit north of the uh, downtown San Antonio area. And again, this is always a tricky spot, especially with wet, with wet roads out there. We always have these curves that are tricky because you kind of, they kind of just sort of sneak up on you as someone who drives up and down 281 all the time kind of notices. But right now you're looking at the here northbound 281 at the San Antonio River again near basically the St. Mary, the North St. Mary's area. We do have the left the far left lane blocked right now. Now there is traffic getting through here, but this is now starting to cause some pretty good delays as you see from our maps right here as for this is basically for traffic coming up from 37 and obviously 35 that 281 that very, very busy area something we'll continue to follow throughout the rest of this hour. I uh, want to let you know about another crash being reported there in the southbound lanes of 35 at I 10. Now we're starting to see some traffic build up here. There was also a crash being reported there at 35 in Martin. So basically in the same area, uh, we'll continue to monitor trans guide see if we get more information out there. So again, 281 North San Antonio River, that's going to be one of our trouble spots. And we are still dealing with this out here, 281 North, uh, a little bit north of the airport at Nakoma. We had a via bus stall out and uh, we've seen emergency vehicles out here for the past uh, 45 minutes or so. So something that um, if you're headed to the airport, a little bit past the airport on 281, uh, just keep this in mind. We have uh, northbound lanes 281 and Nakoma situation out there. Mark and 70 back to you guys. Thank you very much, RJ. In a follow up to our no My Neighborhood series, neighbors in Dignity Hill are calling for help with a growing number of stray animals. As our Avery Everett shows us, neighbors are trying to find their own solutions while looking to the city to expand its spay and neuter efforts. The situation is just getting worse and worse. Even with no pets of her own, Brenna Vega says she's still taking care of animals in San Antonio. It's heartbreaking. She's only lived in Dignity Hill for a couple of months, but since she moved in, she says it's normal to see animals out on her street. I mean, there's multiple dogs every single day that are walking up and down the street. I can't even let my child outside of my home because there's so many wild dogs. And now, even on her front porch. Just days ago, she woke up to a dying dog with no collar or name. I'm really sad because this is not normal. Vega's neighbors say these incidents are not isolated. I am constantly reporting. Vanessa Acosta says since she moved in a year ago, she's made taking care of neighborhood animals a priority. A year ago, you cannot walk the street. Um, there was cats at every corner. There were stray dogs uh, just walking, trotting around, <laughs> asking for food, asking for water. Now she's leading neighborhood efforts to partner with the city to get more animals in Dignity Hill spayed and neutered. We wanted to work with getting more of a grassroots approach. This pilot program covers both District 2 and District 3. A spokesperson with ACS says since the start of this program back in October, there have been monthly procedures with more than 50 animals being sterilized across the span of this program. The hope is expanding and improving this program as we move into the new year. The pilot program started in October and will wrap up at the end of December. The goal? to meet neighbors in a new way. There's a lot of folks that either for, they, they don't have transportation to get to, you know, wherever the, the spay neuter may be available. But with the growing number of animals here, neighbors say they need more help. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Mexico is promising to take action given the increase of migrants at the border with the United States. The Coahuila state government announced plans to increase repatriation efforts. That includes adding more buses and flights to return migrants to their countries of origin, as well as checkpoints. Well, the state of Huila includes Piedras Negras, which is just across the border from Eagle Pass. And right now, thousands of migrants are gathered in Eagle Pass waiting to be processed. Now, the announcement comes on the heels of President Biden's phone call with Mexico's president yesterday. Several senior U.S. cabinet officials are expected to travel to Mexico in the coming days to discuss what comes next. After three delays, the U.N. Security Council says it is expected to vote on a resolution that calls for suspending the war between Israel and Hamas. The UNSC says a pause in military action is needed to bring humanitarian aid to the Gaza Strip. This comes as World Health Organization's teams report, quote, unbearable scenes in the region. The Biden administration has said in recent days that Israeli officials are focusing on lower intensity attacks toward Hamas. 
Seattle Children's Hospital has sued the Texas Office of the Attorney General to block the release of patient information on who has received transition related care. That is according to the Texas Tribune. This comes after the agency sent an investigative subpoena demanding records of any Texas patients who have received transition related care in Washington based health care systems. Court records say that the AG's office stated that it was doing an investigation on the hospital for potentially violating the Texas Deceptive Trade Practices Act. The Seattle Children's Hospital since has argued that giving the patients documents would violate state health care privacy laws. And crowds at the airport have been very busy as people head home for the holidays. TSA is expecting almost 2.5 million passengers a day ahead of Christmas. And that's even more passenger than passengers than last year as this travel period is slated to break records. Now, people are being urged to get to the airport two hours ahead of your flight. And speaking of flights, let's take a look at Flightware's Misery Travel Map. And it looks like we have still 31 delays right now. Uh, New York City, obviously, a very, very busy at this point. If you guys hit refresh, it's up to 75 now. Oh. And that so main, that's an old the, map. The main delays are now uh, JFK, Boston, and Newark International. Also seeing a few here or there at Charlotte. I see Houston Hobby on the list, Intercontinental on the list, DFW on the list, but again, nothing go. too miserable. Thank you very much. Uh, things still looking pretty good in Dallas and Houston. San Antonio also looking okay. Looks good. Well, the holidays are almost here. Your pet probably loves all the extra time you're spending at home, right? But you have to watch out for your furry friends, especially when it comes to decorations in your home and all that gift wrapping. Common holiday plants like lilies, mistletoe, poinsettias, and holly berries can be poisonous to your pets. And when you're opening Christmas gifts Christmas morning, make sure you throw away all the wrappings and bows and all the little things. They can be a choking hazard and cause a blockage in your pet's stomach. Pets, of course, are curious and twinkling lights and other decorations can cause them to choke if they are eaten. And holidays can be stressful enough that some people like to leave cooking to someone else. So if you're looking for a place to eat on Christmas Day right now on KSAT.com, we have a full list and you can see that list now on your screen. Some of those restaurants open include Boudreaux's Bistro, also Burger King, IHOP, McDonald's and plenty more. So head over to our website to see the full list and the times as well. And looking ahead for all Spurs fans tomorrow, the Spurs will host a watch party for the matchup against the Dallas Mavericks. It'll be at Frost Plaza, thus located at the Rocket Lock and Terra, one Spurs way. Festivities begin at 6 p.m. with tip off at 730. The game will be shown on a 40 foot outdoor screen. Fans are encouraged to bring their own lawn chairs and blankets and maybe umbrellas. They can purchase <laughs> food and drinks from kiosks on site. To learn more, head over to our website at ksat.com. Right now, it is 640, 62 degrees. And for many people, the holidays bring joy, but for some, they could bring sadness. After the break, psychologists share the necessary nourishment everyone needs this holiday season. 643, good morning and welcome back. While the holidays brings joy to some, it can be a source of sorrow for others. With about 2.5 million deaths annually here in the U.S., an average of five grieving loved ones are left behind. If heartache has joined your table this year, Alexa Lorenzo shares how practicing gratitude has been scientifically proven to boost happiness and offer a slice of peace. What are you thankful for this holiday season? Probably family and friends. Yep, good health. I'm thankful for my family, my friends. My family, my health and living in America, for sure. Scientists who study positive psychology found that individuals who performed a one-time act of mindful gratitude increased their feelings of happiness by 10% and lessened depressive symptoms by 35%. However, the happy effects wore off three to six months later. So how can you keep up this practice long-term? One, count your blessings. Set aside time weekly to sit down and reflect on what you're thankful for. Two, write a thank you note. What better way to express gratitude than to thank someone for their impact in your life? It can be a letter, an email, or on a sticky note you leave on their desk. We wrote a ton of thank you notes for wedding gifts when we, 35 years ago, <laughs> um, and we'd sure like to get some for the gifts that we've been sending lately. Three, pray. Some see it as an opportunity to be hopeful and expectant for good things to come. Four, keep a gratitude journal. Create a habit of jotting down the meaningful moments of your day.
That way, when life gets worrisome, you can have evidence that better days are sure to come. Incorporating these tips into your weekly routine can foster a healthy sense of gratitude, not just during the holidays, but all year long. I'm Alexa Lorenzo reporting. Right now, 645 on your Friday morning. And traffic is picking up there at Highway 281. Let's check back with RJ Marcus. Yeah, it's 70 marks. Definitely starting to see some more delays here in this area. A little bit north of downtown near the Pearl. We're looking at 281 northbound at San Antonio River. So we do have at least one lane and the shoulder that is blocked off right now for this crash. We see a lot of emergency vehicles out there and you do see some traffic in through here on the northbound side of things. But still, this is slow going right now in this area. Let's look at our map, see exactly what we're looking at. So again, this is going to be affecting traffic that's going to be headed up towards uh, Hildebrand, uh, McCullough, obviously St. Mary. So something that we're going to have to keep in mind there. We do have another crash here, I-10 at the Y. This one being reported here southbound at Martin Street. But uh, you can see there's some delays here for our drivers coming in from the southbound there at 35. But again, this is kind of the biggest deal we're following right now. Uh, still have that stalled vehicle there, 281 and Nakoma. But as we all know, 281 is a straight shot to the airport. So if you guys have to head out to the airport anytime soon, just keep this in mind. You're probably going to run into this. It looks like it might be out there for a little bit. Okay, thank you, RJ. Watch out for that. Yep, it's definitely uh, been a very damp start to the day. As you can even see on some of those TransGuide cameras, a little bit of a glimmer on the roads. We've got the mist. We even have some patchy drizzle. And for some, we've managed to find a few more notable showers out there. Here's what it looks like on our authority radar. You can see we have a few light showers that have just moved east of Bear County, especially one closing in on the Seguin area right along I-10, a little cluster of light rain that can continues to work its way farther east. And then as we head closer into the hill country near Bernie, really in between Bernie and Sisterdale up there in Kendall County, just a few more specks on the radar that continues closer to 281 near Bulverde as well as Canyon Lake. And then across the far eastern reaches of our area near Shiner out there in Lavaca County, even just east of Cuero, just a few more pockets of light rain that continue to push across the region. So we still will deal with some areas of drizzle and mist and fog over the next couple of hours. Generally, though, that fog and visibilities should really start to improve later on this morning. Still, though, not a bad idea to at least keep the rain gear with you should you need to use it. We're going to keep about a 30% potential in the forecast throughout the afternoon and even into the early evening to find a few more isolated light showers out there. And then another copy and paste day expected as we head into your Saturday. But a few more changes arrive overnight Saturday and into early Christmas Eve on Sunday before we see our next cool front move through. So here's the big picture across the lower 48, especially if you're planning on flying out today to the upper Midwest. There is some rain near St. Louis stretching over to Memphis, just east of Oklahoma City. Also an area of low pressure way out west that's still sparking rain and storms near Los Angeles. That's actually going to be the area of low pressure that drags that cool front into our region on Christmas Eve. Temperature wise, upper 40s, low 50s, in the Midwest, 37 in Minneapolis, even below freezing across portions of the northern tier. Meanwhile, for us here in San Antonio, it is a warmer than average start to the day in the low 60s. Let's talk about your travel forecast, especially by Sunday. That area of low pressure is going to continue working eastward. It approaches the state of Texas overnight Saturday, early Sunday morning, right around sunrise here in San Antonio. That's when we could see that next best chance to find some scattered rain, Maybe a couple of thunderstorms first thing in the morning. Also, that does look to stretch up the I-35 corridor. So something to keep in mind, especially if you're planning on traveling to the Austin, Waco, DFW area first thing Sunday morning. That'll continue to push eastward, though, throughout the day, clearing us out by Sunday afternoon. Cooler and drier air works in for your Christmas day on Monday. High temperatures topping off in the low 60s for us here in San Antonio. It will be a bit windy. Windy Monday morning. I think we'll see some wind gusts upwards of about 30 miles per hour at times, so that's something to keep in mind there as well. But what that wind is doing, yes, ushering in that cooler air. You can see by Tuesday and Wednesday, chill your mornings return, so you will need the coat starting off near 40 degrees, but plenty of sunshine and very comfortable afternoons in the 60s. Well, good. Uh, people who get new coats or sweaters can use them. There the you morning. go. You'll have the perfect opportunity. Thank you, Mia. Mm -hmm. About 10 till 62 degrees.
Let's look out there with live cams. So this is actually on the south side, a camera on our south side of town looking towards downtown, but you can't really see because of all the fog out there. So be careful. We'll be right back. All right, about to pour our eggnog at 6.53. Well, let's check back with RJ to see that mess on 281 first. Yeah, guys, I uh, can't wait for that eggnog, by the way, here. But uh, first of all, let's get to you uh, on safe here in the roads here. 281 northbound at San Antonio River. We have a crash causing major delays here. We have at least one lane blocked on the far left-hand side of 281 northbound. So you can see we have emergency crews out there. Let's take a look at maps, and you can see that, uh, yeah, we have a pretty good backup at this moment there, backed up to uh, I-37, I-35. So if you're headed out to the San Antonio airport right now, obviously 281 is a straight shot to the airport and you are coming from the downtown area just keep this in mind chances are you're probably going to run into this seeing crews out there for a little while but uh, they are working to clear out this scene there northbound 281. yep the roads are definitely a little wet out there as we continue to see some of that mist and drizzle and even a few light showers push across portions of south central texas here's the latest in terms of your visibility values still pretty dense fog noted especially in places like bernie as well as New Braunfels, even out in Seguin. So all of those major roadways coming in and out of San Antonio do have some pockets of that dense fog. So just be careful out there this morning. Give yourself some extra time and take the rain gear with you, even though not everybody's going to need to use it today. We've got that 30% potential to find a few more light showers out there into this afternoon. More cloud cover, high temperatures in the upper 60s. More of the same into Saturday. Our next Next best chance for rain moves in early Sunday morning. Then after that, we'll start to clear things out by Christmas Eve afternoon. And then a beautiful Christmas day leads in a great week as we head into next Christmas week. vacations begin for a lot of us after today. So I brought in eggnog for all of us to kind of celebrate the season. And uh, I've, I've, I'm a horrible server. I've done horrible pours. No, I, know. I think oh, I'm they're fine. Oh, yeah. they're good. I added some to yours. But anyway, yeah. uh, I got this eggnog at Trader Joe's. I've never tried nice. this before so um, a toast to Christmas yes, yes. and to our Cheers. KSAT family Cheers. Merry Christmas. Um, Merry it's Christmas. been a great year and of course we wish a very Merry Christmas to yes. all of you who watch us um, every morning right here in San Antonio yes Merry Christmas enjoy your time with your families and your friends and be safe let's try it yeah. okay ready right. let's do it. here we go pretty good it that's is pretty good, good. Yeah. That's I where'd you get this from again Mark <laughs> Trader Joe's. Trader yeah. Joe's. Just going to write that down real quick. And they, and usually yeah. you add nutmeg to the top. It doesn't or, need it. Or, no, it's yeah, good. It's the flavor is really good. Yeah. Yeah. People do uh, cinnamon, a little bit of cinnamon mm -hmm. yeah. sometimes. Okay, we have yeah. that. I could have done that. Um, <laughs> but sorry. I like this. No, but, you're uh, good. You're Merry good. Christmas, everybody. This yeah, is Merry delicious. Christmas. Got a nice little yeah. kick at the end. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Happy holidays. We'll see you back here at 9.